guys, Matty Graham here from Exponential Performance Coaching. Today, I want to bring you an exciting new video series called Whiteboard Wednesdays. Now, I get a lot of questions. Okay, a lot of questions via email, on Facebook, comments from my videos. And what I want to do is take some time to look into those questions a little bit more in-depthly. Now, it's kind of hard to just write an email sometimes or write a blog post about the questions that I get. So what I want to do is each week I'm going to take some of the questions I get, I'm going to pull out the whiteboard and I'm going to explain them a little bit more in depthly. One thing I've found is uh, teaching students exercise physiology which is uh, something I've done in the past. One of the ways to really get a good grip on what you're doing and the understanding of a topic is using the whiteboard, creating some diagrams and just thinking a little bit more in pictures rather than in, uh, in words so to speak. So what I'm going to do is uh, answer some questions. And if you guys have got questions, send them in to me. Give me an email, post a comment uh, on this video below, whatever it is. If you've got questions, ask them and I'll do my best to answer them so that you can uh, integrate that concept into your training or just develop your knowledge base around training, recovery, uh, nutrition, that sort of thing so that you can be... Uh, a faster, stronger, more powerful athlete. So today's question is about resting heart rate. And I got this question, why does my resting heart rate, or why does resting heart rate decrease as I get fitter? So you've all probably heard that this, you know, elite athletes measuring their resting heart rate, they have a very low resting heart rate. And we all know that as you get fitter, that heart rate decreases, but why? Why does it actually decrease? So let's have a look at some of the physiology. So we've got our heart, and if you didn't know, this is what a heart looks like in your body, okay? Now, the amount of blood coming out of your heart every minute is called cardiac output. So this is how much blood is exiting the heart every minute. Now, at rest, this is relatively low just to meet the demands of your body. However, when we start to exercise, this increases greatly as the demands for oxygen increases. So this is called cardiac output, or CO for short. And cardiac output is the sort of summation of stroke volume times heart rate. Now, stroke volume is how much blood is being pumped out of your heart with every beat. Okay, so every beat, a certain amount of blood is ejected from the heart, circulates around the bloodstream. Heart rate is obviously how many times your heart is beating per minute. So if we take how much is ejected with each beat, times how many times that beats per minute, that gives us cardiac output. Now, cardiac output's closely coupled with the demands of oxygen in the body. With endurance training, your heart gets bigger, okay? You get a bigger heart. And the thing that increases is the ventricle size. And this is a chamber that the blood flows into, goes through the atrium, into the ventricle, swells up, beats, ejects the blood. So if you've got a bigger ventricle, you can pump more blood with every beat of your heart. So there's just more of it coming out with every beat. If we've got more coming out with every beat, we can meet the cardiac output demands so our heart rate doesn't have to be as high. The other thing that's interesting is as more blood flows into the heart, it stretches. Stretches it and the heart's kind of like a rubber band. If you've ever pulled a rubber band back halfway and flicked it, it responds with a certain amount of force. If you pull it back even further, let it go, it's going to snap with even more force. Heart's the same. If you stretch the heart, it repels with a certain amount of force. So if you put more blood into the chambers of the heart, the heart stretches more and then beats more powerfully. And it's just like any pump, if you're trying to pump water out of, a, out of a pond up a hill. If you've got a bigger pump, more powerful pump, it can pump more 
faster. So what we've got is we're not only beating more out with each beat, we're pumping it at a more powerful rate so it can get around our body faster. So stroke volume is increasing, but it's also that contractility of the heart's increasing. This is increasing cardiac output, so our heart rate can decrease. So we've got increase in stroke volume, and that leads our heart rate over time to decreasing, because we can either increase or keep cardiac output stable with less work. So there's one mechanism that happens. The other mechanism is actually our blood. So this here is a diagram of an artery, very scientific drawing here as you can see. And these little red dots here are to represent red blood cells. The red blood cells are the cells that carry the oxygen around your body. And the oxygen that you're breathing in, into the lungs, into the blood, are what your muscles need. Now as you do endurance training, your body signals that we need more red blood cells. And what happens as these guys get produced, and I'll just do these extra ones in black here. So all of a sudden we've got more oxygen carrying capacity around our body. It's like if you uh, if you were uh, managing a freight company and you only had two trucks and you had to take a whole bunch of freight uh, cross country, it'd be rather a slow process if you've only got two trucks. Up to 100 trucks, you're able to move more freight more efficiently and faster. So we get an increase in our red blood cells. So we've got more oxygen carrying capacity. So not only are we pumping more blood out with each beat, with each stroke volume, the blood that's coming out of the heart is carrying more oxygen with it as well. So we meet the demands of the body, the demands aren't as high, heart rate can drop again. The other thing as well is our plasma volume increases. Now plasma volume is the fluid component of your blood. So if you imagine around all these red blood cells, there's fluid or water, if you like, salty water, that is carrying all these red blood cells around your body. Now if you were only to increase your red blood cells, your blood would become thick and sludgy and wouldn't be able to pump very effectively. So what happens is our plasma volume also increases. And because we've got an increase in plasma volume, we've got more blood circulating around our body, it feeds back into here. More blood coming into the heart and more blood available to meet the demands of the body. We get an increased stroke volume, which leads to an increased cardiac output. Our resting heart rate decreases. So there you have it. Those are the key things that change our heart rate at rest. So if you're waking up in the morning, Measure your heart rate either by radial artery carotid or chuck your heart rate strap on, measure it on your heart rate monitor. You'll notice that as you train and become fitter, over time your resting heart rate will start to decrease through these mechanisms. So there you have it, first whiteboard Wednesday session done. If you've got any questions, let me know so that we can uh, keep giving you guys the information that you need to improve your performance.